Hello friends, this video on excretory products and their elimination part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Kidney. So now let us talk about the functional units of kidney. Now why do we want to talk about the functional units? Now as the name suggests, functional units. So what is the main function of kidney? Now when I spoke about the four important parts of the excretory system that is the kidney, ureter, urinary, bladder and urethra. What is the function of kidney? To produce urine. Right? Urine production is the most important part of, uh, most important function of kidney. Now inside the kidney there are small units which actually perform this main function of the kidney and they are known as the functional units. So now we will spend some time trying to understand what are these functional units of kidney. Now nephrons are the functional units of kidney. So very important nephrons. Without nephrons kidneys are nothing. So kidneys will not be able to perform their basic function if nephrons are not there. So one kidney is made up of millions of nephrons. So, so many nephrons and each nephron is producing urine. Now, all these nephrons together collectively produce a lot of urine and that urine is then said to be produced by the kidney. So, that means the nephrons actually does the job of the kidney or the main function of the kidney. So just try to understand how important nephrons are. Now whenever we take functional units, you can relate it to something like a cell. We said that cell is the structural and the functional unit of life. That is because small, small cells all together form the entire living organism. Now each cell is not only a structural unit like the building blocks, but also the functional unit because each cell is performing the required function for example each cell is performing the uh, cellular respiration so all such cells performing cellular respiration as a result the entire organism is able to perform the process of respiration so that is why the cells are the functional units of living organism similarly in this case each nephron helps in producing urine and all nephrons together produce the urine which is said to be produced by the kidney so now let us see where are these nephrons located because this is how a kidney looks like the internal structure so where do we have these millions of nephrons now each nephron has a structure very similar to this so you see as you look at this structure at once you feel that it is a coiled tubular structure some tube like structures which are highly coiled round so each nephron looks like this and there are millions of such nephrons inside this kidney. So where are these located? They are located in the cortex and the medulla region of the kidney. So somewhere in this region to this region. So here they are located. Now some part of it is located in the cortex and some part of it is located in the medulla. Basically this deep inside, this portion is located in the cortex and the deeper it goes, this U-shaped structure and this collecting tubule, this are located in the medulla. So now you can place it here accordingly because this is your cortex and this region is your medulla. So that is how these millions of nephrons are located in the kidney. So now you understand now each of these nephrons will produce urine. So all of these urine will get collected through the calluses into the renal pelvis and this urine from renal pelvis will then get into the ureter and then finally go to the urinary bladder. So that is how the process takes place. So each nephron acts as a microfilter. Why microfilter? Because when we say that each nephron produces urine. So what do we mean by produce urine production? Urine is nothing but a fluid which contains all the waste materials of the body. So that means these nephrons act as filter. That is a filter which can take out only the waste materials from the blood because Otherwise, in the body, where are the waste materials or the useful substances? Everything is present in the blood and the blood carries them to different parts of the body. Now, when the same blood reaches the kidney, kidney will filter the blood. It will take out all the waste materials from the blood and then those waste materials will be excreted out in the form of urine. So, in a way, each nephron acts as a microfilter. Why microfilter? Because they are extremely small and there are so many of them. So all these microfilters together 
make the kidney act as a filter. So the kidney acts as a filter to blood. It filters blood, takes out the waste materials and then throws it out of the body in the form of urine. So now we will talk about the structure of a neuron because unless and until you understand the structure of a nephron, you will not be able to understand the process of urine formation. So let us now talk about the structure of a nephron. So as you can see, the structure looks quite complicated and all coiled tubules here and there. So let us try to understand the structure part by part. So these are all tubular structures. So you can see here in the form of tubes. So it is all a tubular structure that most, mostly the structure of the nephron is a tubular structure. Broadly, it has two parts. The first part is the glomerulus and the second part is the renal tubule. So glomerulus and renal tubule, these two parts together constitute the nephron. So where do we have the glomerulus? This portion is glomerulus, you, whatever you have inside that is glomerulus and the entire yellow colored tube which you see that is the renal tubule. So it, the renal tubule starts from here and then it is coiled like this, like this and then this U-shaped tube and finally again it is coiled and then finally the last tube. So this entire yellow colored tube is the renal tubule and this content which is present inside the uh, tube-like structure this is glomerulus and you might ask then what is all these things the red and blue lines they are the blood vessels so forget about them for the time being because now we are talking only about the nephron structure now glomerulus is a network of very thin walled blood capillaries so here inside the glomerulus also here however it looks like some dotted structures but they are actually very very thin blood capillaries so they are all coiled together to form a shape like this and is known as the glomerulus afferent arteriole brings blood into the glomerulus okay now as i mentioned nephron is the functional unit of kidney where the filtration of blood take place and urine for formation occurs so the for that to take place blood has to enter inside the nephron so this is the place where the blood enters and the blood enters through an artery called the afferent arteriole what is arteriole the arteries branch further to form finer arterioles then this arteriole which brings in blood into the glomerulus that is called afferent arteriole and the arteriole which takes the blood away from the glomerulus that is known as the efferent arteriole so this one is the afferent arteriole and this is the efferent arteriole so this one is the the one which is called the renal artery that is basically the efferent arteriole and this one is the afferent arteriole so it brings in blood and it takes out blood so efferent arteriole will drain out blood from the glomerulus now it has been observed that this efferent arteriole has a diameter which is smaller than the afferent arteriole so if this is the afferent arteriole then this is the efferent arteriole so in this case what will happen the amount of blood which is coming to the glomerulus is like huge because the diameter or the afferent arteriole is a bigger tube whereas the efferent arteriole has a smaller diameter so that entire blood which has entered they will just try to rush into the efferent arteriole and as a result due to this difference in diameters of the efferent and the afferent arteriole the blood pressure inside the glomerulus will be too high so the blood will be under high pressure to get into the efferent arteriole so this creates a very high blood pressure inside the glomerulus now what is the consequence of this high blood pressure that we will understand when we talk about the process of urine formation so for now just understand that the glomerulus is a network of highly coiled capillaries Okay, the next part is the renal tubule. The renal tubule, as you can see, it is a long tubule where some of the portions are very coiled, some of the portions are in the shape of U, some portions are straight, so, but it is a long tubule. So, it is further divided into 
four parts. So what are those parts? It starts with the first part of the renal tubule is the Bowman's capsule. So where is the Bowman's capsule? This portion. So the glomerulus is surrounded by a cup-shaped structure. If you see here, this cup-shaped structure which you see, that is the Bowman's capsule. So this is the first part of the renal tubule because from here the tube-like structure begins. The next is the proximal convoluted tubule which is also known as PCT. Why is it called proximal? Proximal means nearby. So this portion, this is the proximal convoluted tubule, this coiled part because this is nearby to the glomerulus. That is why it is called proximal convoluted means coiled. So this is this portion is highly coiled. So that is PCT. Next is the Henley's loop. Henley's loop is this U-shaped tube. So this portion is called Henley's loop. Then again you have distal convoluted tubule which is abbreviated as DCT. Distal means which is located away than the proximal convoluted tubule. So this is again a coiled tube but it is located away. It is located at a distance from the glomerulus. So it is DCT or distal convoluted tubule. And the last one is the collecting duct. This is the, the straight tube is the collecting duct. So these are the five parts which together form the renal tubule. So here in this picture you can actually see the collecting duct being shown separately and this tubular part of the nephron that is this tubular part consists of these three things that is PCT, Henley's loop and distal convoluted tubule. So all these five things together form the renal tubule. So now we have to understand how the urine will be formed in these structures. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.